Hello, and welcome to Canvas Spaces, How to Make an Amazing Pitch Deck. Mm -hmm. I set the screen. All right. Awesome. Hey, I'm Navaz. Um, I am a growth engineer at Eucalyptus right now. Um, I also previously interned at Canva a couple years ago. Um, as you can see on the screen, I absolutely love dogs and I also love coffee, um, but I have been creating pitches, um, presentations and getting up to speak um, for pretty much most of my life. Um, but I started off in um, high school being absolutely terrified of public speaking and I was like, no, I need to find a way to conquer this fear. And so I like dove into it and um, it just learned to embrace it. Um, and Canva has been a big part of um, making presentations and feeling confident when making presentations and get really getting really good at design. Um, so as I said, in my spare time, what I do is basically waltz around Sydney, trying to pat all the dogs and trying out all the different coffee places. So I leave you with, do you prefer dogs or coffee? Um, and this is the link to your workbook that we'll be using today to complement um, everything that we're doing. So it'll be super interactive. Um, so if you type in this link into your browser, so bit.ly 3u3, but you can see it on the screen, um, you'll be able to jump on. And Jess has also dropped it into the chat as well. So feel free to copy it from there. Um, and the first page in your workbook will look a little something like this. Um, and what I'd like you to do is drop in a picture of a dog or a coffee, depending on which one is your favorite. Um, so to do that, we can go over to the elements tab here in Canva. Um, I'm going to type in dog and you can drop in any little picture of a dog or if you prefer coffee, you can drop that in as well. So we'll drop in a little coffee. Um, if you prefer cats, feel free to drop that in as well. All right, awesome. So these are just a couple of pictures that I've done in the past, mostly all on Canva. Um, and yeah, we'll be learning to create some of these. And as you can see, some of them don't look that great and some of them are super awesome. Um, just goes to show that like the more that you practice this sort of thing, the better you'll get over time. Um, and don't be afraid to say that, you know, you've always got room to improve just as Canva does. Um, so let's get started. All right. And so Canva is a graphic design platform that makes it easy to design anything for free and also empowers the world to design. So what we'll be doing in this session, um, is starting off with how do we structure a pitch? And then we'll talk a little bit about how to set it up. So what does an awesome slide look like? Then we'll jump into picking the perfect template um, and designing the content. And then finally leveling up your pitch decks. So how to make them look super awesome um, and add a little bit of something to, I guess, engage your audience and make your pitch really memorable. So to put it into a visual context, we're gonna talk about the parts that make a plane or the parts that make a pitch in this case. Um, the foundations of building a pitch and then making it a little bit magical and bringing it to life. So how have you used Canva before? So if you jump over to your workbook and jump over to the next slide, I'd love to know what your Canva favorite Canva feature is. Um, and you can write in your name here. Mine is probably stickers. Um, and I'm gonna go over to elements and show you what a sticker is. Feel free to do the same um, while I'm doing this as well. So I'm going over to stickers and stickers are basically like little moving pictures um, that like repeat on a small loop. Um, you'll see lots of them in my slides because I absolutely love them. Um, I'm gonna use this one because it's super cute. Um, but feel free to jump in the chat and tell me what your favorite camera feature is as well, because I'd love to know. Um, and if someone likes something in particular, I can teach you how to use it the best way um, in my presentation as well. Layers, awesome. Frames, very cool. One more. Come on team, we can do it. All right, let's go with stickers. I'm gonna type stickers. Stickers. Giphy, yes, that you can customize the colors. Love it. 
All right, awesome. So yeah, these are two of my favorites. I also love exporting as a GIF. So if any of you use Slack or have used Slack, you can upload your own emojis. And what I often do is drop in a sticker, export it as a GIF and then make my own emojis, which is super fun. So now let's do something a little bit more interactive. Um, do you want to take a guess at how long the longest pitch marathon was ever? Drop it in the chat. Jess and Jess, do we have any guesses so far? One week, my goodness. <laughs> yes, interesting. Three days, seven days. 12 hours. Five. Sorry, Jess, what was that? Someone said 12 hours. 12 five. Hours. It could be five hours or five days. I'm not sure when. <laughs> All right, well, it was 29 hours. Um, so the longest business pitch marathon is 29 hours and was achieved um, in Germany um, in 2019. Very long. I don't know if there's any panelists or judges, but they would have been awake for a long time and there would have been a lot of coffee involved, at least I think so. <laughs> All right, so let's jump into some of the content. So why do people pitch anyway? And you can see my fun use of stickers already coming about. Um, so let's talk about some misconceptions. So some misconceptions around doing pitches start off with just to tell someone about an idea. So it's like a one-way conversation um, to show off um, that it's only for business people and like regular people don't need to use it and that it's just to impress someone else. Um, a pitch is definitely a lot more than that. So it's, you know, there to educate, inspire, um, convince someone to give you money for investment if that's what you're going for, or give you an A if you're at university and you're just trying to get good marks. So now we're gonna jump into the content. So part one, woohoo. Um, so let's jump into how to structure a pitch. So a pitch has five main parts to it. So who is your pitch for? What problem are you solving? What is the solution that you've created? Um, how are you actually going to solve it? So the nitty gritty of how your solution works and then how much value does it actually add to the customer or the business um, or the user that will be using your solution? So let's start with part one of those five parts. So who is this pitch for? So when you're talking about who is this pitch for, you really wanna put the audience into the shoes of your user. So you want to make sure that they understand the ins and outs of your user so that you can actually build empathy for your users as well. Um, and this is gonna make it a lot more convincing, especially if you're trying to convince someone with your pitch um, to give you money or give you good marks or to go with your solution or implement it at the end of the day. Um, and a really great way to do this is to actually tell a story. Um, so you might say like, um, Navaz is a really tired dog walker living in the city of Sydney. Um, who can't find an easy location to walk dogs. So we created an app to help her find the best locations to walk her dogs. Um, so putting it in that form at, like, lets you create empathy for the user, um, understand the use case and then the solution as well. So part two is what problem are you trying to solve? So obviously state what the problem is that you're trying to solve. So with like the dog example that I just gave you, um, she couldn't find a good location to actually walk her dog. Um, you want to talk about how big the problem is. So is it just one person that's facing this problem? Is it a whole business that's facing this problem? Is it an entire market or an entire country? Um, or is it random people in a country? Or is it people that just use uh, Microsoft Office or something like that? Um, and then talk about how many times they actually come across this problem or how big the impact is. So is the problem something that they face every single day? So if you're walking your dog, it'd be something that you face every single day. Um, or is it something that's not as frequent? So maybe it's every time you decide to make a lasagna um, and you're touching an oven or something like that. So make sure that you like quantify and add some numbers to it so that people can really understand. And part three, what is the solution? So how are you actually trying to solve the problem? So here you wanna talk about the nitty gritty of exactly how your solution works. So is it an app? Um, is it a physical device? Or is it maybe a strategy that you're going to pan out? 
and talk about exactly how it works. So if it's an app, um, going back to the dog walking example that we just talked about, um, how does it help someone find a good location to walk their dog? Is it going to take some inputs from them um, so that they can understand what location they're in? Um, do you get to put in like you wanted to walk around the city or do you want something really hilly or something really grassy or do you want to be able to just sit down and let your dog loose? And then what does that look like? Um, so this might be a great place to actually pop in some mock-ups um, or actually have like a diagram of how your solution works as well. So the aim of this bit is to really inspire your audience by the solution that you've created. And number four is how does the solution work? So talk about how you're actually going to implement your solution. So what kind of team is involved, um, what technologies you're using or not using, um, and talk about the expected impact that it's going to have. So drop in some numbers. Um, how much time are people going to save by not having to think about where they're going to walk their dog? Um, and also include some visuals. So this is all about educating the customer, sorry, not the customer, the person listening to your pitch, um, so that they can really get a good sense of what it is that you're showing them and what you've solved. And number five, what makes your solution awesome? So drop some quotes in, show some data and add credibility to your solution. So this is going to be the final part of your pitch that's really going to convince the person listening to it that this is awesome, we should go with this solution um, and it's really going to work. So a great way to add data and credibility is to go out and actually talk to people that might be using your solution um, and do some user testing um, and get actual quotes, um, drop in some percentages, like 50% of users said that this app was really helpful to us um, and so on, and that'll help you convince them. So is there any questions at this point? Feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, Jess, do we have any so far? No, no, we don't have any questions yet. Um, but feel free uh, to pop them in the Q&A panel if you do. I'll be able to answer them the whole time. But no, no questions at the moment. All right. Um, I'll keep going, but feel free to drop your questions as you think of them um, in the chat. And then I'll be stopping for questions after every section or in between every section, um, and we can answer them as we go. All right. So what kinds of slides are actually in a pitch deck? So I've broken it down into the roughly three slides. So the first slide is a title slide. Um, so something like this one, for example. So this will be just some text or an image. Um, this is kind of like an introductory slide um, or you're just making like a really bold statement. Um, the second is an info slide. So a lot like the one that you're currently looking at. So you have three to five dot points of short sentences to share. Um, and the final is a data slide. So this will be graphs, numbers, um, again, to try and convince. Um, and a great tip here is to make sure that you have a little bit of text so that when someone goes back to look at your slide, they know what the graphs mean. So let's pick the perfect template. So we're going to do this together. Um, so in your workbook, you've got three slides with the titles title, information, and data. So going back to these ones that we just saw. Um, and what I'd like you to do is have a look through the templates in Canva, and I'll do a quick demo for you in a second as well, um, and find an example of each slide that we just discussed um, and place them into your workbook. So um, I've also got some mock information for you to add. So if we jump back over to our workbook um, onto the next, slide. So this will be your first slide. So this is the title slide. So if we go over to the left hand panel at the top, we've got templates and we want to add a title slide. So if you remember, a title slide is going to have either a nice big image um, and a little bit of text. So a lot of the slides that you can already see are like great examples of title slides. Um, I usually type in pitch into the search bar and that will bring up pitch templates. Um, and we can pick any one of these. So make sure you've selected the right slide um, and then you can add one in. So replace current page. So here's an example of a title slide. Um, and then keep going for the other two. Um, so I've given you some mock data that you can place into your um, slides as well. So I've created, so feel free to start going um, as I'm talking. 
Um, so I've created a fake app called Appreciate Me. Appreciate Me is changing the way that we make friends and try new food. Um, it matches people who have similar tastes for food. Um, it is an app on mobile and desktop. Um, it's acquired over 300,000 customers over the last four months, making it the second fastest growing company in the US. Um, and if anyone's got questions at this point, feel free to pop them in the chat as well. We're going to match. So match people and food. Let's see. Mobile and desktop. And connect people. All right, awesome. So Emily is still working on the first slide. So maybe another minute or so on the first slide. It's fun looking through all those templates, isn't it? Finding the perfect one. Yep. Um, and one of my favorite tips is probably that you don't have to use the same template for all of your slides. So for this data slide, for example, um, I can go to a different template and you can always come back and change the colors. Um, so let's try and find an awesome data slide. Maybe this one. Maybe not this one. Okay, how does this one? It's got a little graph in it. Um, and even though this has got like greens in it, what we can actually do is select this color up here and then change it to white. And then in the bottom, we can change all the iterations of green to white. So that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and sometimes it doesn't change the text. So you have to do that by yourself. But um, that's a really awesome feature and find it's a really quick way to like use different slides um, and then make them really cohesive. Um, and you can say that all three of these look like they're all part of the same deck, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, I love that little time saving feature. I'm glad you showed that the change all. Yeah, because it just really does one of my favorite me. features. I remember when they released it, I was very excited. <laughs> All right, maybe pop in the chat if you need a little bit more time to do all three slides. So you've got your title, your information and your data slide. And remember, you don't have to have it completely finished right now. This workbook is yours to keep. So you get the idea of how to do it and you can come back and tweak it in your own time. So as long as you've had a go at all three slides, that's good. All right. Awesome. I think we might keep going then. Um, remember, you can always come back to it. Um, this is more of an exercise of finding the slides through the different templates and understanding what the different templates are that are out there. Um, but while you're there, um, does anyone have any questions at this point? Feel free to drop them in the chat. Oh, Emily is working on a pitch deck for a romantic comedy limited series. She's writing. Very that cool. sounds so cool. <laughs> yeah. Very keen to hear more about that later, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's a romantic comedy, maybe using some red or finding a template with some red in it would be really fun um, to, you know, provoke some emotion and stuff like that. Um, and definitely use some stickers. There's awesome stickers for like love and laughing and all that sort of thing. Um, definitely recommend. All right, let's keep going. Um, so now that we've played with templates, do you have a favorite template? Um, I'm going to share mine with you. This is mine. Um, I used it for my um, honors research project when I was at university. Um, and even though it's pink, it, it's quite a professional deck. So it's great to use in like an academic sense as well. We do have a question now uh, from Lam. What is the structure of a one and a half minute business pitch? Do you need to eliminate any of the parts that you've talked about? That's a really good question. Um, I don't think I, I would eliminate any of the five parts that we just discussed, um, but you probably just wouldn't go in depth as in depth into all of them. Um, so it, I think it absolutely makes sense, like starting with um, the user and who it's for, then describing the problem, um, how the solution works and what it is, and then what makes it super awesome. Um, and I think that'll take you exactly 1.5 minutes and we'll just really nail it on the head. Um, one thing that you could potentially add is like, why are you the best person to solve that problem? Or why is your team the best team to solve that problem? Um, 
but yeah, I think everything that we've discussed so far is like the absolute MVP or bare minimum um, for an awesome pitch, regardless of the length. All right, awesome. So quick tip for you here is that um, when you go over to template, so if you find your favorite template, um, what you can do is actually save the name of the template so you can come back and search for it later. Um, so that's what I'd probably recommend you to do in your workbook. Um, you can drop the name of your favorite template in here. So I think mine's in Tori. Is it Satori? Not Santori, Satori house, um, which I know is actually the text on it, but you can also look like pink and white, um, geometric gradient and so on. How do we save the name of a template? Um, so you'll see the name of the template is up here at the top when you're actually on the template. Um, so you can't bookmark it, unfortunately, but you can like write down the name um, in your favorite notes part or something like that. I think you can actually search templates. Like yeah, this. yeah, it's such a, you could even put it in the notes section of your presentation if you want, because yeah. if you don't use a presentation for a while, and then you come back a few weeks later and you want to add a slide, but you can't find the template that you used, it can be a little bit frustrating. So it's such a good tip that Navar's is sharing right now is to actually just notice the name and stick it in the notes of your presentation or somewhere you will find it and then you can search by name. Um, and just going off what Jess said, so to add a note, um, there's presenter notes up here at the top of every slide. So probably do it on the first slide, otherwise you're going to be searching for them later on. Um, and you can just drop in the name. Yeah, so pink and white geometry gradient. And you probably don't need to write down the whole name, but most of it. And then the schema. Um, and then once you click off it, it saves automatically as well. Gosh. Right. We've got a story from Leah here who lost her business in Hurricane Laura. So that sounds really tough. So she's starting online courses, certifi certifying licensed beauty professionals instead, since she doesn't have a salon. Very nice. Really um, entrepreneurial of you, Leah. Good on you. Yeah. That's really tough to lose everything there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think um, some great tips for that is to add video, which we'll talk about later in um, the presentation as well. Awesome. So let's talk about what makes an awesome pitch slide. So to do that, what we're going to do is together, we're going to pick some slides from an old pitch that I have. So in your workbook, you've got three slides. Um, have a go at fixing up the slides and then we'll discuss some of the improvements that we've made together. Um, so if we scroll down, so this is the start of the next section. So this is actually from a pitch that I did at university. Um, we created an automatic sheet music page channel. So what it did was um, it would listen to basically what song you were playing and you would tell it what song you're playing. And it was like a little device that sat on top of your sheet music. Um, and as you reach the end of the page, it would automatically flip the page for you. So you didn't have to stop playing your instrument, turn the page, and then go back to playing your instrument, um, which is a really tough thing to learn, especially when you're starting out. Um, so these are three of the slides that I created. Um, so what I'd like you to have a go at doing is like, how would you improve this slide? Um, would you make the text bigger? Would you line them up differently on the page? Um, so this one, and it says what kind of slide it is on every single slide. So in this slide, it is an informational slide. Um, so obviously we probably want a little more text here. Um, the next one is a data slide. So have a go at reworking this one as well. Um, a good tip is probably that you can like click and then drag over different components so that you can move them all together, which will make your life a little bit easier. And then the last one is a title slide. Feel free to let me know what you're changing in the chat as you go and then tell me um, what slide it is that you're changing as well. So um, if it's the unique selling point slide, if it's the market analysis one, um, or if it's the title slide at the end. All right. Awesome. So I wonder what two things, looking at this slide, unique selling points, what are the first two things? that you would change on this slide, if you could put those in the chat. So I know Navaz is going to rework those for us now. I wonder what design tips would you use for this slide? 
So if you choose the same things as Navarre's. Right. Let's start doing this just while you're doing that together. There you go. She's giving you a hint. <laughs> Looks like alignment is going to be a bit of a feature here. So Emily says she'd make it have a music or a tech theme. And Pauline reckons you should limit it to just three graphics. Yeah, I like both of those idea, uh, ideas. So let's write them in. So let's bullet points. And this text is maybe a little bit too big. Eight, so that's a good size. Um, so make it have a music or tech theme. Make it have a tech theme or music theme. Awesome suggestion. And Pauline um, reckons limit to three graphics, no more. Um, yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, another thing that you can do, and you'll see me doing later in the slides as well, is just making them a little bit smaller um, so that the text is kind of the main point of emphasis rather than the images. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have three big images, it's probably the better way to go. So I love that. Change the font size. Um, Wendy's mentioned as well. So change the font size. Would you make it bigger or smaller, Wendy? Change the font size. Wendy says bigger. Awesome. Yep, totally agree. Um, to be bigger. Um, I definitely think it's a little bit too small. And if you were presenting this in a, like a huge auditorium or something like that, you would not be able to see what is on the screen. Um, and that's a big no-no when you're doing pictures. You want to make sure that everyone can read what's on the screen. Mm. Um, or make it easy for them to read at least. You don't want them to be struggling through it because that takes away from the actual content that you're presenting. Awesome. Was to put the most important on the right. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> Lee, oh, that was, I yeah, that that was more for websites apparently. Okay, yeah. Um, that does work for websites because um, people look in the top right-hand corner for calls to action. Um, with a pitch deck, I think it's a little bit different. You probably want to make sure that everything on the screen is like the most important content. Um, and if there's anything extra, it's probably just words that you're saying um, to complement what's already on the screen, which is awesome. All right, have, let's have a look at the second one. What would right. you change on this one? So see if you can think of two things. What are the first two things you would do here? It's quite a lot of information on that slide, isn't there? There is a lot of information on this slide. <laughs> um, but I do remember that for this pitch deck, we had a constraint to only have 10 slides. So I feel like that's why this one had a bit too much on it. Summarize the findings. That's really awesome. Thank you, Emily. Summarize the findings. Um, and maybe also talk about like how many people we actually interviewed because I think it was over 100 and that's like a really important statistic that I didn't put in here. Yeah. Um, make it into two, I'm assuming you're saying slides. Totally agree. So break this into two slides. Um, I think there's way too much content going on on the one slide. Um, it could potentially even be three slides. Um, so the first one would probably include all this information up here. Um, the second one would include, like, would you buy this device graph? And then the third one would be, how annoying is page turning when you're playing your musical instrument? Um, and then potentially having, yeah, a little bit more um, text as well. So changing up the colors, Wendy also mentioned, totally agree. Um, they're all kind of blurring into each other. So we want colors that contrast each other a little bit more so that we can really clearly see um, what the different sections are and how much they're taking up in the pie charts. Um, and again, making the text bigger, I think, on this one. Text being larger. Awesome. And what about this title slide? I know this one is going to be a tricky one because I already feel like it's quite good, but I'd be really interested to know if anyone can think of a way that we can make it even better. All right. So mm. we can summarize with points before all the info. I'm assuming Lee is talking about the last one. Is that correct, Lee? Yeah, the last one. Okay, awesome. Um, so what about this title slide? So really stretch your brains. How could we enhance this one? What do you think, Jess? <laughs> mm -hmm. What do I think? 
Um, I would make the colors consistent with the last couple of slides. Yeah, totally agree. Um, I think it used to actually be this red, but this red is very intense. So I think mm -hmm. it actually changes to be a white, but then we have to change all of these as well. Um, and we make them black, maybe not black. So the one nitpick that I'd probably have is, so I just pressed R on the keyboard to bring up a rectangle in Canva or some shortcut. It's probably adding like a box behind this text because it's a little bit hard to read. Mm. And then you can change the opacity of it up here. So that looks really nice. Yeah, that does look good. Um, Leah reckons revolutionized should be larger. Totally agree. It's like a really tiny font again, like some of the other pages that we saw. So making this a little bit bigger, probably sitting in an okay location. Yep, so Turnomatic is actually the name of the device that we created, <laughs> Pauline, but um, yes, probably explaining what this is would be really good. Um, so maybe adding one more sentence to say like, um, automatic sheet music, page turner sorry let me change the color of this as well um and i think there's a lot of fonts going on in this page and they're a little bit random so making those hit crazy would be really good so fonts. um what's your recommendation for how many fonts you should use on a page oh really good question um i'd probably stick to two maximum so you probably have one font for the heading and then one font for the text that you've got and the information and things like that and along with font sizes you probably don't want to go for more than three font sizes per page so you can see that this one's got like four or five different things going on um so it just makes it really hard to read um and take in the information yeah. um and having cohesive fonts and fonts that are roughly the same size makes it a lot easier to read as well um, you, em, Emily's got a question there. Is it possible to make a Canva presentation with clickable links? You absolutely can. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're adding a piece of content, so for example, basically anything that you can click on on this screen, you can create um, a link for. So if I wanted to add a link to this image, what you do is go over here to the top right and there's a little link button and you would drop your link straight into here. So Canva um, and then if you were to export this as a PDF um, or even in presenter mode, um, if you go to click it, then it will open up that link for you. Um, and I do that with my resume. If you create your resume on Canva, um, it's a really great way to hyperlink like your LinkedIn profile and all that stuff. Um, so fun tip for you. Yeah, that's a great idea. All right. Um, so let's keep going. So. Let's try and summarize just a couple of the things that we talked about. So, oops, sorry, I need to be on that mode. Awesome. So we said um, no more than two fonts. I think per page. Yeah, two. So your whole some people, some people suggested three. Definitely no more than three. Yeah, three is probably okay as well. Um, but I would say that one should be like a title one, one for headings, and then one for like paragraph text. Yeah. Um, awesome. What else did we say? See if people can, um, what, what's the next thing you should be putting in your summary slide here in your workbook? So Navas has already given you the first one. What's um, yeah. another one? What's another rule we should put in here? I believe this slide is also in your workbooks as well. So feel free to add it in. These are already text boxes. So just double click to select all the text. Um, and you can write them in as that they're going together. Um, let's have a look. So nice, large, clear text. Large and clear text. Um, if you can't stand back, look at your screen and read what's on the screen, the font's too small. Um, you shouldn't need to squint to look at any of the information. Um, awesome. No overcrowding, especially for data, says Pauline. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, no overcrowding, especially for data slides. Love that one. 
actually meaning. So yeah, um, I think that can go hand in hand with having like short, simple sentences. Short, simple sentences. Um, and not too many ideas per slide. Per slide. Even just one main idea per slide, do you think? Yeah, well, I think if you have an informational slide, you potentially will have a couple more ideas. Um, around, around, around a single theme, perhaps. So yeah, maybe one a theme, theme, yeah, per slide. You can have a, like, maybe, how many, how many bullet points did you say? I think you said somewhere earlier, like three bullet points. Yeah, three to five. Three, um, three is probably the ideal, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. What do we think about colours? We're going to have a colours rule, anybody? Should we have 24 colours in our presentation? We should not have 24 colours in our presentation. <laughs> <laughs> How many colours do you think is good for a presentation? <laughs> Leah, no way. <laughs> Unless it's a really intense rainbow. <laughs> yeah, I think if you had like um, a title slide and maybe it was in the video in the background or something like that, that would be okay. But yeah. not on like a regular informational data slide. Up to five. Um, yeah, I think five might even be pushing it. So for example, this one's got like roughly three colors, right? Um, I think the simpler you go with the colors, the better it is. So I would say like three or four max again. Um, so not, or maybe let's say three to five colors. Mm -hmm. Colors per slide. Um, obviously, if you've got like a pie chart or something like that's going to need some more colors to display every single section, or if you've got a graph or something like that, um, that makes sense as well. Um, mm. We've got one more. Is there one more suggestion? Can you use brand color decks? Yes, using branded color decks, um, pitch decks is awesome as well. And it just means that like picking and choosing colors is a lot easier. Um, obviously, if you use like a templated design, like this one on the left, it's going to have all those colors laid out for you, um, which is awesome as well. So that makes your life a lot easier. Um, let's see. I think the last one we can probably just go with like cohesive theme. Yeah, theme. I don't think we've done that yet. Um, so making sure you're using roughly the same colors, fonts, um, images throughout your presentation. Um, that will make it stand out and just like flow a lot better as well, which is what you want. You don't want people to stop and squint. You don't want them to be like, oh my gosh, this is so much on the screen. Um, you want to shock them in the right way when you want to shock them, um, not the things that you don't want to shock them for. <laughs> um, Lam has asked, do you have any suggestions of color groups for different purposes for business tech, creative and marketing? Um, that's a great question. I think it's a kind of a tricky one to answer. Um, because sometimes it depends on like the situation that you're pitching in. So if you're pitching to school, for example, I think you have a little bit more um, luxury in like the colors that you choose. And like, if you want to be really outrageous and use like yellows and greens and um, stuff like that. Whereas maybe when you're in a business environment, you have to stick to a branded pitch deck um, and color scheme. And maybe you want to use something that's not as like purpley themed and things like that. You want to stick to like blues um, or more black and white with like one color that kind of stands out. So for example, this template here might not be the best for a business um, pitch deck for like a corporate environment. If you're in a startup, it'd be awesome. This one might be better for like marketing, et cetera. Um, but what you can do is just type it into the search bar. So just go marketing deck or maybe just marketing, I reckon. And it'll come up with great examples for marketing deck. So this is the basics of influencer marketing, and you can see it's like a really fun and playful one. Um, so that's great as well. And Jess has dropped a link to the Canva colors as well, which is an awesome resource for you to try and decide what colors to use as well. Yeah, so Canva colors, I really encourage you to check that out if you want to learn more about colors um, and a lot of the meanings that come with colors. Um, so blue is often... Yeah, so uh, Navaz is showing here. There's a few color palettes that they choose for you. There's a whole bunch of different tools here. So you can go and research the meanings behind different colors. Uh, just like blue, for example, um, is used by a lot of uh, um, like banking institutions and things that want to seem quite reliable and steady. 
Um, and uh, you can go and research all the different meanings behind the colors to help you choose uh, which ones might be good for you. And then when you've chosen the color that you want to go with, there's a tool here as well, the color picker that helps you choose complementary colors to go with the, your, your main color. So it has a color wheel and you can choose different color relationships um, to help you choose a palette, like a brand palette for your company. That's awesome resource. Um, and as you go into these, so for example, if you know you want to make a purple pitch deck, you can actually scroll down and go browse templates. Um, and then, oh, no, hang on, click the wrong thing. But anyway, presentation. Um, and then you've got, you can select color here, or you can actually look at it by category. So if you're doing business, tech, architecture, creative, you can press these and it'll give you lots of great examples to go from. Um, and then obviously we can filter by color as well. So if I want green, there was no green ones. <laughs> Blue, you've got mm -hmm. a favorite blue example for you as well. Better go and create some green ones straight away. <laughs> All right, awesome. So that's present mode. Do we have any questions at this point? Um, everyone's super awesome, super active in the chat, which is great to see. I'll just give it another minute or so. Um, I hope that was really useful. If you don't have any questions, I'd love to know um, like what's the coolest thing that you've learned so far in the chat. Um, I actually didn't know about the Canva color picker. I know you could do it inside of Canva, but I didn't know there was like a separate website as well. That's really cool. Um, yeah, yeah, there's like three tools on there, I think. Um, let me just have a look. Um, there is a color palette generator, a color palette color palette ideas for inspiration, the color wheel, which will help you choose um, complementary colors, and then the color meanings. So if you really wanna know um, what you're saying by choosing a particular color, that's a really useful one to go and read through. Yeah. I think it's good to give like facts during your presentation as well, right? So that'd be an awesome one for that. Like, do you know what the color purple means? And then <laughs> yeah. from there. Um, all right, I'm gonna keep going. It looks like there's no questions. So let's learn to take your slides to the next level using stickers, of course, um, and some other great Canva features. Um, so let's have a look at a couple of ways to take your slides to the next level. So these are just a couple of different ways that you can do it. Um, the first is adding stickers. So to add a sticker, go over to Elements, um, drop in a sticker that was in my recently used, but you can go to stickers down here, or you can type in sticker in the search box. And that'll bring up stickers as well. Um, and then you can type in turtle, shell, whatever um, to add all that awesome stuff. Um, I'm probably just going to use this one and move it across. Awesome. We can add audio. So there's an audio tab on the left as well. Um, and what you do is I think you just do that. And you can see that it's added audio to my file here at the bottom. Um, so that's a great thing to do as well. I'm going to remove it because otherwise it's going to start playing um, when I start presenting again, um, which happened to me before and I couldn't work out where it was coming from. Um, that's super awesome too. Um, also, quick to quick mention that I am using Canva Pro, so you're going to see a couple of different things compared to if you're using normal Canva, um, but all the features that I mentioned so far are in premium and in the free version as well. Um, finally, we can add video um, and to add video, you just drop in the video, resize it the way that you want. Um, and you saw that I was using video before when I was showing you all the different pictures that I had done before. Um, and then there's GIFs, so you can go to more and then click Giphy, which is in our apps and integrations. And you can drop in whatever you want um, and also search for stuff. So maybe we'll add in this one. Super cute. And then the final thing is mockups, which we'll talk about in a second as well. But you can go to elements um, and then go down to where is it? Frames. Um, and basically, anywhere that you see this sort of landscape image is an opportunity for you to drop in um, any kind of image or video. So I can actually take this video from here and drop it into here. And that will just like shape the video exactly the way you want to, which is 
super awesome as well. And you, you mentioned to me at one point that uh, a video is really great to have on your title slide. So like your Turnomatic where you had that picture, yeah. um, another good option would have been maybe to put even a video in there, which yeah, I agree absolutely. is. Um, and that can be a real video. So you can actually import videos into Canva um, or you can use existing ones from here as well or anywhere on from the internet really. Mm. Awesome. Wendy's, so, Wendy's got a question. How yeah. many stickers is too many in a slide or a presentation? Um, that's a good question. Um, if you ask me personally, you know, add as many as you can. <laughs> <laughs> um, but talking in a professional sense, um, it, it really depends. Like some of these stickers are like super intense, like over the top. Um, and then some of them are not so intense and over the top. So let's have a look at some of these. Um, I reckon like one or two per slide is probably the max that I would go for, um, which you, you can probably see that I've done throughout. So this one's kind of like an image. So I would probably stick to like one of these. Um, if you've got something like this, I'd probably just go for the one because it's quite fast and it's quite big as well. Um, yeah, I would stick to like one or two maximum, but it really depends on how you're using it. Um, so like this one that we've got in the corner here, for example, is like not too intense, but just adds a little bit of flair to the slide. So maybe you can get away with like two using something like that. Um, yeah, but I think using at least one sticker per slide is kind of fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. Um, again, each, each their own. Um, so gauge your audience and that sort of thing. Um, when you add movement, it does take away a little bit from the actual text that's on the slide. So if you add too much of that, it's going to turn into a video rather than um, a, like a pitch presentation. Um, but I think a little bit of movement makes it a little bit more engaging and less boring, um, especially if you're talking for a while. So here's an example of a title slide with video. Um, and the way that I actually did this was, I'm going to delete this video in the background. So you go over to the video tab pick one of your videos and then you're going to click and drag it and drop it into the background like that. Um, and then when you click present, your video should play automatically like that, um, which is really awesome and definitely a great way to enhance um, visuals for title slides or make them a little bit more fun. Um, probably wouldn't recommend doing something like this and then having a sticker over the top. Um, but again, it depends what kind of video you have in the background. All right, so here's an example of Appreciate Me that we were doing before. So um, we're going to have a go at um, enhancing this one. So here I'm going to add a video in the background. I'm going to type in food into videos. Um, which one shall we pick? Maybe this one is really fun. Um, and this is a great way to sort of just enhance it. Again, as a title slide, really fun. Okay, cool. Let's learn to add some stickers. Um, so again, going back to appreciate me, I'm gonna to go to elements, go to stickers. I'm gonna type in food. Um, it was like a little taco one that we had before. Do you know what? I'm gonna go taco instead because it was really cute. I love this. So mm -hmm. um, and it just makes the slide a lot more fun. Um, and I think like the animations and the stickers are like really satisfying. So you could probably just sit there and do your entire presentation with some background. I'm kidding, don't do that. <laughs> um, awesome. Again, if you've got any questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. Um, so now let's talk about how can we add product shots. So there's kind of four ways that we can add product shots. Um, the first is a video, the second is an image, the third being a GIF, and the last one is an integration, um, which you can find in more, and then they're all listed here. So here are an example. Here is an example. Let me present. Please let me present. All right, I will click play. <laughs> um, so you could do something like this, where you drop in a video and it's on half the screen. Um, and that might be an example of your product. So if I had a skincare cream or something like that, um, that would be an awesome product shot. Um, another way to do it is I just went to one of our websites um, and took a screenshot and I've dropped it into one of these frames. 
um, that you can find in the elements tab. So if you're on, we can go here and then you can type in like phone and you can select one of these, which is awesome. And I've done the same with the laptop as well. Um, and it makes it look, you know, really cool. And like, it's actually come to life even when maybe it hasn't yet. Um, and here's an example of a website. So you can actually create your mock-up on <laughs> um, Canva as well. So here's an example of a website that I created all on Canva. So this is just normal text. Um, we've got a couple of little stickers as well. I've created a button using a rectangle in the background. Oops, all right, there we go. Um, this is awesome as well. And what you can actually do from here is download it. And then you can download it as whatever you want. So I love using GIFs. So if you want to keep the movement, a GIF's really awesome. Um, if you don't want to keep the movement, you can export it as a PNG and then re-upload it into one of the mock-up screens. So here I've dropped in a laptop and then dragged in that image. Um, so you can do it all on Canva if you want to. And it's a great way to do like an MVP design. Um, MVP is just minimal, minimum viable product, which means like, the easiest, quickest solution um, to what you want to build. Cool, awesome. Any questions at this point? Also, how cool is this sticker? <laughs> no, that's it. No questions at the moment. I think we're all good. Let's keep going then. Leah was just wondering if we get step-by-step -step, uh, instructions for the tips and tricks. Uh, and I was just letting her know that you do get to keep the workbook and that's got that summary slide um, of ways to make your presentations better. But everyone will also get a recording of this presentation after it's finished as well. Awesome. Um, so question from Emily, were you suggesting that you could make a website using Canva too? Um, you can, so I'll show you what that does. So if you go to here, so click the three buttons and then you go website. You can make a static website, which means that you can't really click through it. Um, and you could do something like scrolling and I'll show you what this does. Um, I think I've used this before to like a portfolio um, for like my design work. Um, and it feels like a website. Actually, let's try the other one. Yeah, this one. Okay, this one feels a lot like a website. Yeah, nice. So this one's actually got a menu in the corner and these are all the different pages um, from my pitch deck that I've created. And so when you can like scroll through for each one um, and click onto different slides. And then if you've hyperlinked stuff, so remember I hyperlinked this image with canva.com. When you click it, it's gonna open canva.com, which is pretty awesome. Um, so yeah, it's an awesome tip. I like that feature, it's pretty cool. It'd be exciting to see what it grows into in the future. Um, who hosts the site for it to go live? Um, so it's not a full website. Um, it's really just like a different way of presenting a presentation. Um, and what did I click? So I went to the three dots in the corner and then I typed in website into the search bar and then clicked website there. Um, sometimes it'll be in this button here, but that's probably the best way to find it. Okay, awesome. Any more questions before I keep going? Uh, Emily asked, can you send that URL to people? Yes, so you Absolutely. can send that link, yeah. Yeah, so if you go website and then open website. So if I send this to you in the chat, you will be able to open it um, and see exactly what I see basically, which is pretty neat. So the website could not be real website. Um, yeah, it's not a, a real website. It's kind of like a fun way of presenting a presentation. Yeah, that's probably the it's, best it's way to a scrolling it. a scrolling website. It's not a fully functional website with multiple pages. It's yeah. a way to scroll through your uh, slides whilst online. So it's a um, scrollable, continuous view of the slides. Yeah, um, my best recommendation would just be to like open it and have a play. Um, and that'll really help you understand exactly what's going on. But what you can do is like hyperlink different pages within your website um, and actually make it feel a lot like a website. 
Um, but obviously that's just going to take a little bit of time. Um, but I think it's a really great way to build a website without building a website. Mm -hmm. um, awesome. You could add it to your site, yes. Um, so if you hyperlinked that particular part of the presentation, you'd probably just want to make sure there's a link that you can get back to your original website as well. Um, hope that answers your question, Lee. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Um, all right, some final tips um, just before we keep going. I'll finish up, I suppose. So practice your pitch out loud. Um, it's always great to say in front of someone. So for example, this presentation as well, I practiced in front of Jess a couple of times um, and she was giving me, giving me feedback as I went through. If you don't have someone to practice with, record yourself um, and then watch it back. It's a really great way to pick up on little things that you wish you weren't doing or um, things you don't realize that you're doing as you go through. Um, keep to simple sentences. Don't use really fancy words. Don't go over the top. Um, keep it to language that you would normally use. Um, sweet, simple sentences are just as convincing, if not more convincing than using big words that potentially other people don't realize like the meaning of and things like that as well. Um, and it's gonna make it flow a lot more naturally as well. Um, check for spelling and grammar mistakes. Um, I love to copy paste my text from another editor just to make sure that like the grammar is correct as well as the spelling. Um, you, the, the worst thing that you can have is to have a spelling mistake in your slides. And I'm sure I had one somewhere in my slides, but I always do it. Um, but it's like the best way to make sure you're clean and crisp when you're about to do a presentation. Um, get someone else to look over your presentation. Um, that's a really easy way to spell check it and stuff like that as well. Um, and don't forget to use visuals. Um, either, you know, create a really fun slide with color um, you can add stickers, video, GIFs, um, add something to make it a little bit more fun. But at the end of the day, you do you. Um, this is just a scaffold for, you know, one way to make a pitch, but your perfect way might be something different as well. Um, I do have a challenge for you that is to try and apply what you've learned within three days. So um, there's statistics that go, if you apply slash use what you've learned in three minutes, you retain like 90% of it. Um, if you reply it within three hours, it's like 70%. And then if it's been in three days, it's like 50%. So if you obviously, if you do every single one, it's going to actually push that percentage up. Um, so, you know, there's so many great things that we learned today um, as you're all sharing. So make sure that you do give it a go. Um, maybe finish off some of the slides that we were working on in the workbook straight after this um, or later today. That would be super awesome. Um, and don't forget to share your learnings with friends. <laughs> But um, the best way to learn from each other and also share what you've learned today. Um, awesome. And I'll pass it back over to Jess and she will finish up from here. And uh, thank you everyone for attending. Hope to see you soon at another Canvas Space webinar. Thanks for joining.